Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And I'm just a poor boy, Chris Fuller. There you go. And on today's episode, we are talking about being a Christian versus being a disciple. Are you a fan? Are you a follower? What does all that mean? And what does it mean for your life today? Fuller, you ready to have this conversation, my dude? Let's get it on. Let's go. Let's get it on like Donkey Kong. Get, get it on, little doggy. <laughs> is, is that just, I, I know the phrase, is that from something? I'm sure it is, but it, it makes me always think of Small Fry, the little uh, Buzz Lightyear Toy Story short on Disney Plus with the tiny, like, uh, what is it? It's uh, the chicken. Get it on, little doggy. It's a song. Okay, but look up, Gene the, Watson. Look up little fr- or Small Fry uh, Toy Story. And there's a there's a part where the little toy buzz from oh, the fast oh, the food short play. film yeah yeah he smacks the he smacks the ham and he's like or no he's who's he smack the ham or Piggy? the dog or he smacks somebody goes get along little doggy that's what always makes me think that's of. funny but apparently get along little doggy was a song back in the day and it went like this get along little doggy get along little doggy did you just pull out your butt yeah, I did. But that yeah. was that was very good. But no, welcome back to the show, guys. Hey, we're you never and we're you ready never to go. know what you're gonna get here on the RTC land, you're my dude. Get, you're gonna get overly caffeinated hosts because we are on Sponsored episode two us. with coffee. We're still drinking the coffee we drank last week. We are. We're drinking the Honduran uh, Chris Fuller RTC Rose. It's so good. It is. And I'm drinking out mm-hmm. of the the limited edition Starbucks Traveler mm. mug edition Notre Dame. Cheers. Cheers. This is actually your mug. It is. Because I forgot so, to buy mine at the game last so week. So I'm still drinking out of our 100,000 download, which I think we're up to almost. We're about to cross 300. It, at it, date of recording, we're at like yes. 290. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, we're almost double from when. The, and this mug just came out earlier this year. Double. We're at triple, homie. Are we? We're, we're, we're That would be triple. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right, dog. I, I'm a little off. I'm a little off. I might not be able to spell. I may but not I can be a do smart some man. math. But I know what chocolate is. <laughs> Have you seen the interview with him about how he got his voice for Forrest Gump? <laughs> no, Have you seen but I that bet one? It was epic. Oh man, dude! Uh, Tom, and, and of course, Tom Hanks tells a story in the only way Tom Hanks can. But they found this little boy, and they wanted him to. Um, they wanted him to be the young Forrest Gump, and so they were like, "Okay, you you guys work together so that way he can sound like you and the voice you're thinking." He goes, "No, I just want to listen to him and just let him be him and do it." And so the Forrest Gump voice that you hear from the kid, from the kid, and also from what he did, that's exactly how the kid actually sounds. So he sat down for hours, apparently, with a tape and just was asking him questions and getting answers. And so we hear about the lies like a box of chocolate. I can't even do that. You do it. Lies like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And so and he would put like consonant like they're trying to die and you ain't got no legs. Like, like that's how he would. That's how this kid talked. So literally, Tom Hanks talked. The exact same way the kid did. Okay. Now, of course, he says now the kid's grown up. He talks like a normal person. He was like seven. Sure. If from you, the South. If, deep South. If you could pick a like one-liner from Forrest Gump, what would it be? I'm asking an RTC question. You mean besides like run, like run, Forrest, run? That's yeah, what like I do all the time. I do like, run, like, Forrest, run. I do that like, one a lot. Like an epic line. If that's your epic line, that's fine. Or my favorite one is um, Officer Dan. Would you like some ice cream? I, I do that one too. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan, Dan, ice cream. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't seen I haven't seen this shit movie since this show, this movie since I was probably in high school. So my favorite been line a long is long time. Yeah, Jenny and I hung out the whole summer. We went together like peas and carrots. <laughs> like that. that's my all time favorite line. We went together like peas and carrots, and it, they go together good. And they got bubble the vegetable and then, melody. And then I love it when he's talking with bubble gum about the different types of shrimps. Oh, yeah. The shrimp stew, scampi shrimp, fried shrimp, shrimp gumbo. My favorite thing is always the first time they meet, you meet Lieutenant Dan. Okay. And Bubba, he got that big old lip like this. I don't know why I'm talking like folders right now, but he got that big old lip. And Lieutenant Dan, he goes, you better tuck that thing in before it gets caught on a tripwire. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you can just pull movie lines out your butt. I watched this movie a lot. <laughs> so speaking of movie lines, we went into the Facebook group and said, hey, guys, we're recording tonight. 
Let us know what you want us to banter about. So think about just pulling things out of your butt. One of the questions that was, at, oh, by the way, we're at 283.4 thousand downloads day to time yeah. recording. You know what? By Christmas, I bet we're over. That's wild. All right. So one of the questions asked by Tyler Tenpass said, what's the greatest, greatest VeggieTales song of all time? Ooh, see, now this, this is, is a hard a one, man. This question. is like straight up Christian homeschool question right here, man. So <laughs> greatest so VeggieTales song of all time. I would Go. have to say... Uh, Minnesota Cuke is where this episode or this song was on, and it was a silly song with Larry. I don't even know what that one is. Minnesota Cuke, what? Minnesota Cuke and the Search for Samson's Hairbrush, I believe, is the exact episode. Um, and it's Pizza Angel. I I don't know that one. I think I, I'm pretty sure it was Samson in the hairbrush, or maybe was that, oh, or was where it? Where is my hairbrush? Or was it Robin Good? Man, you've watched a lot more Veggie Tales than me. Homeschool, bro. Homeschool. A lot. Even though, let's be but, honest, the best Sunday school days of all time was when the teacher rolled in that TV see. on the cart that was like, you know, rat to straps on. You know, like, oh, it's going to be a good Sunday. It's going to be a good. And then Bible Man comes on, then it's a bad Sunday. But, you know, it's going to be all a good right, Sunday. So let me read you the Pizza Angel lyrics so, here. So, that, so, so this is like legitimately a song? Yeah, so it's, uh, I set the table with the paper plate. How would I know that it'd be late? It's taken so long. Where could it be? Had a 30-minute guarantee. Pizza Angel, please come to me. Tomato sauce and cheesy so gooey. Pizza Angel, I'm on my knees. You're my number one pie from Sicily. Did it get lost or did I just or did they just forget? Should I have ordered on the internet? Ready for dinner? No, I'm not so sure. I think my soda's room temperature. And then it goes, Pizza Angel, please come to me. So the next one is, Wow. Uh, I was concerned for my delivery. Eight little slices of heaven for me. Can't stop Still thinking it would make man. me smile. When I taste my first Chicago style, going crazy while I paced the floor, then my heart skipped when I heard the door. <laughs> like, dude, Phil Vischer was next level, man. Uh, he's just awesome, man. No, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I love cheeseburger. That's a good one. Oh, that's a, you are a like cheeseburger. Uh, water buffalo. Everybody has a water buffalo. Yes. Summer fast, but mine is slow. There's that one. There's a say boo. Sing it with me. There's a, I lost. I, oh, oh, where's um, my hairbrush? But I would say my favorite one is the keep walking. But you won't knock down her wall. Keep, keep walking. walking. But it isn't going to fall. It's, it's plain, plain to see. Your pants are very small to be walking. walking. You'll Jock. be knocking down her wall. Jock. But I do say this is probably my favorite VeggieTales song. Yeah, you see, ready? Look. Pizza Angels, a silly song from Minnesota Cuke, and the I've never seen that one. All right, but you ready for Boom. the ready for the greatest VeggieTales song of all time? All right, let's hear it. It's no surprise where most vegetables come from. Lose vegetable stand? Most vegetables, Pa. Most. Do you vegetables know what it is yet? Come from the country, Larry. That's right, Pa. I haven't heard this one. Off a dirt road in the boondocks. Is this an actual like on an episode? Oh no! It's just the Betty country. Tales gone country. That's not. That's not the same, bro. That's not the same. Uh, I got no shame. Oh wait, because we could we could have done Funky Town then. Funky Town. Don't you take me to Funky Town? Yeah, Veggie Tales sings Funky Town. But let's still feel it. But yeah, yeah. That when I found this whole album, I just lost my mind and just listened to the well, whole thing. Did you ever listen to like Veggie Rocks, where it was like all the that punk was rocks, you? All bro. There was one day you pulled into like I I I walked up Jamming to you after out. it's like a, after like a wanna drop off or something. I walked up to your car and you're just vibing to Veggie Tales Rocks. Yeah, I'm like Veggie is this, switch, is this is switch foot? Yeah, no, it was. that's Veggie Tales. It's Switch Foot and Veggie Tales. Side note: Okay, so speaking of, um, so my my my, I, I did just say my favorite Veggie Tales song though is "Keep Walking." Um, but so our boy Ryan Lauks, another podcast listener, no homeboy since high school. He texted me today. He goes, "Dude, I think only you will appreciate this." They did a Switch Foot song in service for their new uh, series that they just started. Um, uh, you made for more. Like, we were made oh, for yeah. so much more. We were made to live for so much more. There you go. He goes, dude, I think you'll appreciate this. And I'm like, you guys brought old school Switch wow. for the church? He goes, yeah, it fit the series, bro. So that was like the transition. I'm like, that's so cool. So I just sent Brandon Soche. Brandon Soche is the worship pastor at my church. He was also featured on uh, Christian Music. Back in the day, back man. Way, what was it, 8 9 or whatever the heck episodes it was. But way back in the day. Christians and Music. Uh, and our first Halloween episode as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I sent him, you remember the band 12 Stones? Uh, yes, I love Crash. 
I said yes. I'm crashed. Twelve Stones crashed the other day. I was like, bro, I don't know if you ever heard of Twelve Stones. I said, but Dude, uh, this you know was my jam essence, back in the day. Like, you know Evan Essence, like bringing back oh, to yeah. life. He oh, yeah. was, like that's the lead singer from Twelve Stones, right? And it, so it's like it's I, a vibe. As soon as I said, yeah, I don't know if you've listened to Twelve Stones. He responds, bro, I live on Twelve Stones. <laughs> but I, say, I mean, the dude literally did screamo. Yeah, so. Yeah. Screamo Rock. My my old school. I was like, yeah, this is my old school jam right here. I did introduce um, Eli Smith to some OG Reliant K. Yeah. Like, okay, so who doesn't own a tel- or cell phone? Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, there's there's Sadie Hawkins like, dance. No, there was the that, anatomy of the tongue okay, and the cheek. That was, that was a good one. That was before. That, I'm talking about uh, two, t- two, two wrongs don't two make Two wrongs our, don't make a right. But three, or no, two lefts don't make a right, but, but three, three do. do. Yeah. That, no, no, no. That I album. introduced him to. Had four different albums. No, 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 no. It was the best. I introduced him to the OG Hello McFly. Yeah. Because the right. bass is a fat picked bass. So and it's, it's you, high. You mentioned Sadie Hawkins dance. Sadie Hawkins dance. My niece, my niece was telling me and the other day, she's pants. like, yeah, I'm going to invite this boy to, to, to this dance. And I go, oh, is it like a Sadie Hawkins dance? She's like, what's that? I'm like, what? you guys don't know what a Sadie Hawkins dance? They don't even Hawkins call dance? it that? They, supposedly, new school doesn't call old school the Sadie Hawkins dance anymore, where you ask, the the girl asked the guy to prom. And I'm sure she's just going to mood ring for that one. Mood ring, oh, mood ring, oh, tell me, will you And bring? then there's always the classic, you know, I owe it all to my girl's ex boyfriend. Like, man, Ryan K. If it wasn't some... for him, I would still be searching. It. That's mm hmm. How do you just pull these songs out your butt? Bro, I live on this stuff. That's wild. Okay, so here's another question that we had. So Michael says, give us some recipes that you've made that were so straight up good and read Ooh. us the whole thing so we can make it. Maybe we. So do, we, do we talked turn, about this. Do we need to turn Real Talk Christian Podcast into a food we blog? Ta- we talked about like having a little tab on the website Jeez, now. I'm putting like best the, recipes. Best, best meatloaf recipes. Janiel's got some solid ones too. Janiel Neil's got this. Oh my goodness! I'm going to talk about it. Sorry. Inside, I don't even know way, what's in it, but I know a few things that. You are know, in there's it. a way for me to create a whole ecosystem where people can put in their own recipes, and it automatically goes live on the website. That would I be could awesome. do that. There is a way to do that. That would be awesome. But so this yep. recipe is like it's chicken, and then it's got like this bacon cream sauce that it like soaks in. And it's like it sits soaks, in. and it's like it's got mushrooms in it. So I don't know, but you could leave the mushrooms yeah, out if you don't want you to. Know, whatever, but, mushroom but, soup, so it's but you use like heavy whipping cream, and like you make a bunch of bacon and use the bacon fat, and you put like Always. heavy whipping cream and some spices Always. in it, and like it's crack. It's chicken crack is what I call it, chicken crack, <laughs> and it's like. You want to know why I'm fat? This is why. Because like the first few years of our marriage, I make I made her make that at least once a week. It's to me, chicken crack is your best meatloaf. Like it was straight up. And she won't make it for me anymore because she's like, it's so unhealthy. And I'm like, I know, but it's so good. It's so good. She probably would make it for me if I really asked her to. Janiel, can you make it for me so I can try it? It's and then I can just get, like sneak Chris some like you but sneak food to a dog under I the think, table. You know what I'm so saying? So we, we were talking about, before we get on to the next question, we were talking about, yep. oh, we got a lot of good ideas, a lot of things that are going to roll we out from. We have so much stuff that we want to do, man. I'll give you a preview of some things oh, that we might do. Are you going to do it? Are you going to say it? It's going okay, to okay, okay, be a preview of things we might do. I'm ready. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a shirt I'm wearing right now. Hot stuff. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a couple good looking guys here mm, mm, in an outline here mm. on the shirt. You have to go to YouTube, listeners. If you are on mm. Spotify or go to the YouTube page, click on this episode, go to minute uh, 13. This is where we're going to start talking about this. Minute 13. Eh, like 1340. No, no, no. 13. We're going to start. Okay. This is where I start. Start okay. here. Because you can see the shirt then. Uh, Continue. We're going to start out. Fun facts with Fuller line of clothing. Fun facts with Fuller shirt line. So where we have this little this little album of of yours truly and this good stud over Nicole here. Nicole Hobbled made it for us. Looks real good. It does. It's it a does. hand drawn outline. It is, and it says until next time, take it easy. You know the tagline at every episode. Every ends. episode. And on the back, we are going to have four different fun facts from Fuller's, and. Uh, and the design is it, pretty dope. It's a collection, dope. right? The, the design is pretty dope. It's a collection, so you got to collect all four, right? Mm. And so we'll, we'll be you'll be seeing some previews about that. But the, the hope is is maybe the first of the year we'll we'll get that rolled out. There's going to be some new coffee mugs. Mm-hmm. There's going to be where uh, we've talked about the idea of maybe even like a coffee mug, a custom where you send us your fun fact, and we put your fun fact on the RTC coffee mug. Uh, we've That'd talked about dope. sponsoring a Bible. We actually had that was in our Facebook. Sabrina group. started that one. Right. No, no, Sabrina said, "How about users sponsor episodes?" So we're going to sponsor, do the sponsor an episode, sponsor like I said, a Bible. I think I'm allowed to have a favorite listener, and then, uh, <laughs> and then we've talked about adding a tab where we start putting down like family recipes, so you can like eat like Fuller and Mark. What the heck is Real Talk Christian Podcast turning into? We're, we're turning into 
a brand. family. We're turning we're, into a brand. We're turning into a family. Pretty soon, we're going to be on the Magnolia Network. No, I'm not just kidding. <laughs> that would be dope, if though, If someone bro. can get us in touch with Chip and Joe. I will be eternally grateful. Just for grateful. them to listen to us. That would be dope. To, for them to be on the show, bro. Like, let's just go for it. Anybody got connections? To be on the show. Because Janine always says that I remind her so much of Chip, right? I'm just kind of like crazy like Chip is. And it's true. And I, I look great. A, I'm a cute person, so I got Joe down. <laughs> is that what you're basing this on? I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm, you're crazy. I'm pretty. That's, <laughs> well, what, that's I guess, how it goes. I guess it works. <laughs> but yeah, so there's some cool things that may or may not. Wait, actually, let me see out. your shirt again. Is that when I had my long hair? Yes. Yeah, that's when I had my long hair, my swoop. You know I got what, a haircut. You know what this is I from. look good. This is, like, look at this haircut. Wait. I went back and watched the old YouTube videos with my hair poof. But do you know what this that's is from? That's from Engetti, baby. From the Engetti. Matt Grimm. This is from Engetti. This is a picture we took um, at Engetti. Which, side note, Matt, what are our responsibilities this year at, at uh, Engetti Fest? Well, you know what? We need to reach out and be like, bro, we're ready to go. We're ready. We're, this, yeah, this okay, is, fun we're ready. fact. Matt, Matt, listen to this right now. My, Matt, Gr- Matt Grimm is Matt a Grimm. listener. Matt Grimm, listen. Listen to me right now, Bobby. And, and he's, uh, he's a listener. Pause your that, mower. Pause your mower. Pause your... Hide your kids. Hide your wife. No, we like we look, that. We're looking for you. We're looking for you. <laughs> My wife and I jammed a cane almost every single day. The band called Kane. They do. Yep. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Please get them to En Getty. Well, so... If, Please get them if, to En Getty so I don't they know, can give me a hug. You, did you see the, uh, the, the En Getty Music Fest website? By the way, get your tickets and get a music fest dot com uh, for twenty twenty three, so you can come hang out with your boys. But um, actually, how about we do an RTC? This was Beth's idea, so I can't do it. No, 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 no. Do a meet up RTC listeners, and then we try to like get there a night early, talk about taking over the the chapel, and then Beth makes her meatloaf for everybody, and then Janelle makes her like crab chicken for everybody. Yeah, a meet and greet, and we Pot just love. have a and we have an RTC meetup every year at Engetti. Oh, bro, that'd be great. Go to, go to, yeah. How dope would bet, that be? I bet we could talk to, to <laughs> Matt and David Grimm about it. That would be so it. cool. And line something up. But anyways. Uh, if anyone could donate a trailer that, or a, a big old like RV so, like what Jordan Felice traveled in for nah, us to sleep we don't in, need that'd be that. dope. We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that. Keep we, going, keep going, We're keep close going. enough. We're like 45. Dude, we're, uh, you live right by me now. Look at how much closer it is for us now. It's so nice. Um, But they announced that they're d- those who, who donate like a large sum of money and partner with them okay. to put on these music fests. They are giving them some special announcements. And I'm guessing they have lined up a few artists. So we'll find out here after the first of the year, but they're going to find out in November. Oh yeah. I wish I was like, man, I wish we had some cash to throw their way so we could just find out, pay a little early access, but just know. don't give us a st- dude. We will speak all day long. But you know man. what? We maybe, got you, bro. Maybe we got an in with Matt. We love you, Matt. Matt, maybe you could just kind of, I mean, you know, we're poor folk. We're poor folk. We're two dudes in a basement. Speaking of poor folk. Um, All right, last question, because we're we're getting close to that 20-minute mark, and we got to move on. Uh, okay, so, oh, dude, we got two good ones. We got, we got, we'll, we'll do more year. next episode, okay? Fun fact, it'll be Thanksgiving, so that'll be a good time to About go through them. food. Okay, so here's the next question All right, from Justin McCrary, which he gave us a shout-out inside the group for calling him out when he was mowing. He wants to know, what's the best Little Debbie? Ooh, that is not a fair question. Okay, you got Swiss cake rolls. You okay. got zebra cakes. <sighs> you got them little uh, Christmas trees. All right, I'll tell oh, you, my brother, geez. my brother, my little brother's favorite uh, growing up was zebra cakes. Hundred percent, hands down. Have you right? had a zebra cake roll though? I have not. So, yo, I like the zebra cakes. I like the, and the Christmas trees really are the Christmas zebra trees cakes. are what's up, man. They're the, they're the zebra cakes with a different color. But I do think. you like the white Christmas trees or the chocolate Christmas? Oh, I trees? hate the I hate the chocolate. I don't Christmas like the chocolate. Trees. I want the white, the white ones. But I would have to say old school for me. I'm old school. You know me. I'm an old soul. So the Swiss mm. rolls, bro. The little you Debbie Swiss rolls. Be, they holos suck in comparison the, to the little Debbie Swiss rolls. The man. Twinkies used to be really Dude, good. Dude, or <gasps> when they were. Well, this is this is wonder, but, but uh, yeah. hosted, this is hosted too. Zingers, remember zingers? Oh, yeah. oh. But, but the, like, if you talk about that, Twinkies used to be really good. They suck. Twinkies now. were good. They used to be like zingers. They used mm. to be like eight inches long and like four inches wide. But Not see, really, I would rather but, have a zinger because it's like a Twinkie with frosting on top. Yeah, but so good. I, I orange dream the orange one, dude. Mm. Back in the early nineties, mm. I was a Twinkie eating fool. <laughs> I love my Twinkies. Now you still a Twinkie, and now I'm just a big old fat Swiss roll. <laughs> I'm a big honey. Okay, I'm a big a honey bun. Because this is, this is fair. Two questions about your Swiss rolls, right? Because right. you can eat them normal. You can eat them straight, right? Sure, sure. Do you bite it or do you unroll it as nah, you eat the Swiss bro, roll? you don't ruin the un- by unrolling it. You bite that sucker. No, do you got to unroll that mug. 
This, I, I enroll it. Or I bite it off as a roll. I, like I roll like a scroll. I, I go I back it. to my previous statement from last week. You're kind of like Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer, you psychopath. Who unrolls a Swiss roll? <laughs> Another question. Do you ever put them in the freezer? Yeah, duh. That's so good. That's only for hot summer days, though. You do that. That's that, fair. That, that's true. a cold treat. And then if you eat it, what's the best thing to drink with it? Well, I'm always a milk guy. Always milk. Always and, milk. And not, not fat-free milk. It's mm. got to be whole milk. We want whole milk, baby. Whole it's milk not is good. so much it's better. Not, than for, it's not good for my weight gain, but you know, it's tasty. It's tasty. It's, it's getting in my belly. <laughs> get in my belly. But, no, but, but my first thought was, okay, favorite little Debbie. I mean, Swiss cake roll is the OG, but man, there's just something about the zebra cake roll. Uh, the, the zebra roll. cake, because you get the roll, you get the zebra cake, and it's just best of both worlds, homie. Nah. Best of both worlds. I mean, worlds. that's good for you, bro. bro. These world lenses are seeing nothing. Dude, but I gotta Swiss go. Rolls. I need to go to Aldi tomorrow and get. Oh God, I don't want the off-brand ones. I gotta go to Meyer tomorrow and get some. Yeah, because that sounds real good. All right, so we've talked about the coffee. We've done the banter. Let's uh, let's read the review and dive. Into I read this the last one, so you got this one. I, I get this one. This one is from. Oh, that's why you wanted me to read it. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you caught it. <laughs> R E no R H E A V I A Riva Riva. I'm guessing it's Riva or Rivia. It, it'd One be like two. stevia so revia, revia. we're gonna okay. go with revia and i'm sorry if we butchered it we just suck anyways revia says love this podcast i love your podcast i've been listening for a couple of weeks and can't get enough a couple of weeks this was june 30th so it's been a couple months now but uh i've already shared it with my friends and i can't wait to have good conversations with them about jesus keep doing what you're doing well, thanks, you. That's awesome. Review. And again, if you guys want to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we'd greatly appreciate it. But we'll also take a rating on Spotify or yep. really anywhere. A, anywhere. And we're, you can, you can recommend us on Facebook. But well, the challenge we gave to all of you last week is share with a friend. One, one person, friend. One person. Every week you have a, a duty. Oh, wow. Wow. We're going you there. Holy crap. To we're share going RTC. there. Oh, yeah. I'm calling them out. You have a duty to share one RTC. Share it on your episode Facebook page, baby. Friend. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it on your Instagram stories. Like, come on now. Just just a little poop. All you got to do is hit the little share button. Raina Grace. Raina Grace. Are you listening, girl? I, I see you resharing stuff from Cedarville all the time on your Instagram stories. Whoa. Where's the stuff for RTC, girl? Where are we at? Now she's done listening. Where to are us. we at? No, but we uh, that's the best way to, to get <laughs> us into the ears of other listeners is to share and to write us a review. So if you have not done so, please do so. And then reach out to us with your name and address. It doesn't matter which way you reach out. Text, email, DMs, whatever. Carrier pigeon. Carry, carry smoke signals. Whatever you want to do. And we will get you burner a... Burner phone. You can do burner phone if you want. We will get you a mini swag bag. Mini swag bag bag well last week we we started jumping into the conversation of um just how do you have conversations with unbelievers and yeah. share your faith and do these different things and we kind of teased a little bit where it's like hey we're gonna just continue on the conversation with with that uh, but it's really not a two-parter at all it's, it's a no. whole different conversation right. and and you know an unplanned two an unplanned <laughs> unplanned conversation and this was a question that was asked from us on instagram in our dms from pierce and he says I would like to hear y'all take on what it means to be a follower, not a fan of Jesus. We're going to do that right now. And if you've been involved in the Christian world, I would say probably in the last 15 years, you've probably been familiar with the book called Not a Fan from, oh, goodness, this is my sister-in-law's pastor down in um, down in Kentucky, down in E-Town, um, Kyle Eidelman, Kyle Eidelman, down at yeah. uh, something Christian church. I'm, I'm looking it up. Kyle Keep going. But either way, but this is Missy's pastor, so it's just super cool. So he wrote a book called Not a Fan, and the whole idea of this is the fact of what does it mean to be a fan of Jesus that you just like him, you cheer him on, but is there a difference between being a fan and being a follower and what that actually means? And, you know, there's a lot of conversations about what does it mean to be a Christian? Are you really a Christian? What makes you a Christian? And so today— uh, Southeast Christian Church. Yeah, so she goes to the E-Town campus, I think, or like Uptown or whatever. They have weird names for their campus. I'm an I don't know. Uptown girl. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, yes, I got the song. I got the song. I was thinking Sorry. Uptown, funk you up. No, we ain't going. That's not going. But, but either way, so so let me set the stage for real right, quick for the go conversation. For and then we're going to we're gonna have a lot of. It's like setting a Thanksgiving table. Ooh, that's next week. But <laughs> we're going to have a lot of different setup. And then check this out, dude. I, I, literally, I have a lot of content to read. We're going to read an entire chapter from the Gospel of John. Mm, We're going to read some more. And then I, I have it. five questions for us to ponder and talk about right, at gonna, the end. So, bro, bro, just help, go ahead and hit the mute so button. So, your, just... your boys got some talking to do. All right, it's all you, bro. So, setting the stage. So, we are living in a world that is known Christianity. Wow, you legit muted yourself. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So, so we are living in a world that has known Christianity for a very, very long time. Like just a couple of generations ago, many people in America and many other Western countries would call themselves Christians because of maybe their upbringings, a, a, a fear, a respect for a higher power, or because they were baptized at some point. But as the world changes, the separation between Christianity and cultural Christianity, which we've talked about before, sure. seems to be growing rapidly. Mm. But I believe that there are many people today who still go to church, believe in the higher power, but may not actually be true Christians, true followers of Jesus. So today I want us to talk about the difference between what it means to be a Christian in name versus an, a Christian in dis, like being a disciple of a, Jesus. A fan versus disciple. Fan versus follower, man. You got to stick go. with the S. Yes. Got to alliterate that mug. So, if, and if there is a difference, like, can you, if you call yourself a Christian because you pray, like we talked about the sinner's prayer, is that enough or what does it actually mean to be a Christian and what should we do about it? So, we're going to jump in to see where does the term Christian actually come from? Is it in the Bible and what Jesus, because we're not going to talk about, we're going to talk about the apostles, but I wanted to focus on what does Jesus say about it? Because if a Christian is a follower of Jesus, we got to know what on earth Jesus actually said. So in the Bible, we see Christian only used in three different verses, okay. three different places. The first time we see it show up is in Acts eleven twenty six. And it was the unbelievers who gave Christians that title. And because it even says in there, and those the followers became known as Christians. And many people believe that this was actually kind of more of a sneer or a joke or like, oh, and then they picked up the title of like this, you know? Well, because they didn't believe that Jesus was the Christ anyway. So now they're calling him Little Christ. Little, little, little Christ. Little Christ. It's almost like, um, oh, well, there's like some baseball, not a baseball team. There's some sport teams where the mascot they were used to be made fun of, but then it kind of became like a calling card to them. You know what sure. I'm talking about? I'm trying to think there's some teams that have little things where it's like they were used to make fun of the other team by calling them this. Like the Chicago Cubs? No, no. I mean, I don't. I can't think what one of the sports teams were, but literally like they, their mantra and calling card became what used to be used to make fun of those people. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. And so that's where a lot of people believe that the term Christian, the little Christ, little Jesus of what that term came to be. Sure. But the first time you see it in Bible, it was a reference to what unbelievers called the people who followed after Jesus. The second time was in Acts 26, verse 28, where King Agrippa tells Paul, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. This was when Paul was, you know, traveling to Rome and he gave us his defense for Agrippa and talked about the whole Christianity. And at the end, King Agrippa says, you almost convinced me to be a Christian, which I, I've always kind of wondered, is that him actually saying, you know, you almost convinced me, but not quite. Or it's like, <laughs> well, you almost convinced you me. Almost, like you, you almost, you got, almost me. got me. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Right. We, we, we can't read into the text to tell right. you what it says, but can't speculate. It says that so far, the only two times that we have seen the Christian term used in the scriptures is unbelievers using that terminology. Mm -hmm. And then the third time is we actually see in the gospel, in the gospel, that's not true. The letter that Peter wrote in first Peter four sixteen, where Peter says, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. So if anyone suffers as a Christian, in other words, if you suffer because you're known as a Christian, sure. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in the fact that they know you as a Christian. Right. So my personal belief is that every time you see Christian used in the Bible, it's used more as a what those people are or what you get accused of or suffered because of how people see you and what you do. So, you know, by seeing these three verses, then the question is, is how should we view the word Christian in light of this context and bringing it forward to today? And then the question then goes into, I have a lot of questions. So Go like last it. week we had ask, so we're asking a lot of questions. What did the early church view as being a Christian? So if we flat out say, this is what people called these people, what did the early church view being a Christian to be? And simply put, a Christian was someone who followed, which we talked about, we were talking about a lot, but the way. Right. Christians were followers of the way. They didn't call themselves Christians. They didn't call themselves Baptists or, you know, Presbyterians or Catholics or Eastern sure. Orthodox or whatever title you want to give yourself. They didn't call themselves Christians. They called themselves followers of the way. And, um, you mean like that? Yeah. That's a design I've been working on. Yeah. Follower of the way. What's that symbol? That is the, uh, it's the, the, it represents like the hook for fishers of men. It's like a Christian symbol in Aramaic. Oh, I was saying, cause it's an Aramaic symbol. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's basically, it means you're a follower of Christ. That's dope. In Aramaic. 
I mean, I have I have Greek tattoos. Maybe I need an Aramaic tattoo. Yeah, that's so, pretty dope. So yeah, that's yeah. really dope. Actually, I've never seen that one. That's cool. But so a Christian was someone who followed the way and was a disciple of Jesus by way of being disciples of the apostles and of of the early church fathers, and sure. then the next generation, the next generation. So right. in in context, in the old te- no, no, in the old times, in the New Testament, it wasn't being called a Christian. You f- were a follower of the way. And you were a disciple. Right. Then the question then becomes is, okay, so what does the word disciple mean? Now, this stuff we've all talked about in the podcast, oh, but yeah. I want to just go through the stuff. We, it's been sporadic, so now you're just laying it out yes, on one I'm, episode. I'm building the case. I'm building the case. So, so far, we see no one calling themselves Christians until they're being persecuted or outsiders say. It's Instead, like a badge of honor. Yes. And they said, no, no, no. You're a fo- we're followers of the way. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, we right. follow the way. We follow Yeshua, Jesus right. Jesus of Nazareth, and then they became disciples. So when does, what does a disciple mean? Because we see disciple all throughout Scripture. Well, this comes from Bible.org, and it says the Greek term, is it uh, Methodist? I think is how you pronounce that mm-hmm. correctly, right? Mm-hmm. Methodist refers generally to any student, pupil, apprentice, or adherent as opposed to a teacher. So it's a direct reflection of teacher-to-student right. Uh, relationship. In the ancient world, however, it is most often associated with people who were devoted followers of a great religious leader or a teacher of philosophy. So in the students ancient of rabbis. world, it was students of the teacher. Right. So a disciple studied right. under the teacher. They learned from the teacher. And what does that mean? So they, they didn't just learn from the teacher. The whole goal in ancient the ancient world was to Become the teacher. Yes. To totally imitate the teacher to where you couldn't tell the difference when the teacher passed away between the te- the teacher's teaching and the disciples' teaching. Well, it's the same. And I think blue-collar workers in America understand this the best because when you go into electrical work or, you know, the, 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 the steel union or you go right. into the carpenter union, you are an apprentice underneath, like, a master a, journeyman. Right, exactly. Right? And so you got to learn from the master. So what do you do? You're with the master. You're learning the master. You're you're working alongside of him. And, if, right. and, and correct me because I'm not a union guy, but it's more of do it with me. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Then you go do it. And now you teach someone else. Well, right? it's, it's, not, just, kind of it's not just union. It's the trade, right? The it's, trade. It's, Thank it's you. The not trade. just union workers, but so, the, the trades. Because you yes. can be a trades not be in the union. But correct. the trade is, is yes, it, it works very much that way that the, uh, the apprentice works towards becoming the master journeyman, right? Mm-hmm. That's the goal. The master journeyman teaches everything that he knows. And that's the way, the exact way that the apprentice learns is the exact way he teaches it. And I remember I was talking with Randy Spiker about this. He does certain things electrical that are very different than from what other people do. He goes, this is just what I was taught. This is what my my journeyman taught me to do. And I liked it. So that's what I do. So you'll see different, you know, flavors inside of the same job because of who your master journeyman was. In the same way with early Christianity, and I thought this is interesting, but also uh, the ancient world. A disciple is just a great religious a devoted fathers of a great religious leader or a teacher of philosophy. So you think of Aristotle or Socrates, Aristotle, Plato. So yeah, right? well, you can, you can. In the Greek. And then you can also think of like the, the Mishnah and the Midrash, right? The, yeah. the rabbinical yep. teachings. I was going to go there too. Yeah. Uh, perfect. They, there was followers of certain rabbis, right? They, they emulated those rabbis. They taught what those rabbis taught. They basically became that rabbi mm-hmm. uh, in following, right? Uh, we see this in even in our culture of, of, of Calvinists, right? A Cal- Calvinist is a follower of Calvin's teachings, right? Right. An Arminius is a is a follower of that those teachings. Which what is if you're like, like an Augustine and you follow more of Augustine's teaching than Calvin? That's kind of where I land. So kind of like <laughs> like Luther. Luther was an Augustine. Lutheran, then you have a whole denomination right. called Lutherans. Right. Well, the Protestant Reformation came from all that, so from Luther, right? Right. Who was an Augustine follower, and so. Uh, and I believe there's still a lot of discipleship, just not just with Jesus, but other things like you and I both like, like, I feel like I'm a disciple of like my pastor or like Justin Briley sure. of unbelievable other things, or people may feel like they're theoretically, I guess, kind of weird to think of people being well, dis- past- like our disciples with RTC. That's kind of weird to think pa- about. Pastors are, 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 are good. Probably the closest thing to disciples makers, right? Or they should be right. Or, I'm ment- not all- or maybe a mentor, or you mentors, know, um, uh, podcasts, I, I just, that's a supplement to me, right? That's supplemental. That's a good teaching, but it's hard because we don't have that relationship. Part of that discipleship is that relationship. And but. actually not just hearing what's going on, but knowing, knowing, right, seeing, right, exactly. Feeling. Right. So it continues on later in that article from Bible.org. It says, in general, the education of boys in first century Judaism centered in the home around Torah learning. The Torah was taught primarily by the father, but during the time of Jesus, 
there is good evidence to suggest that primary schools, Torah schools, yep, Torah schools have been developed to mitigate against the inroads of Hellenism. So it's kind of like Sunday school is created because they wanted to shut down Hellenism. Um, but after a boy was 13 of age, there was no more formal education as such. If he went farther in training preparation for being a judge, teacher, scribe, or head of the synagogue, he might continue his study of the Torah in a small group or seek study as a disciple under certain scholars. The apostle Paul was an example of a Jewish boy who had left home, which Tarsus, to study the law under Gamaliel, a famous rabbi in Jerusalem. So because at 13, they, you know, you if you didn't continue in Torah school, you like what you know what well, Peter became, and John did. You became a man at that point, right? You picked yeah. up the trade. So now it's time for you to go out and do work. So yep. you either become a man of the book or you become a man of 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 of, 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 a, of, a, of, a, of a trade. A man of the cloth. Man of the cloth. <laughs> <laughs> they all had cloths back then. But 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 that's why you see Peter and like when when Jesus died, what did the disciples do? They went back to what they were comfortable and what they knew. And so Peter with fishing. Right. You know, Peter, Peter, James, and John with fishing. Like that's just what they went back to. That's what they knew, because those were the professions they had when they were 13. Yep. So it's, it's kind of interesting to think that. They, he was called them to be his disciples when they were already like adults, which is kind of wild to think about. But a lot of people, including me, believe that most of the disciples at that time were actually teenagers because of the temple tax. Because when they paid the temple tax, only Peter paid the temple tax. Nobody else paid the temple tax. Yeah, but that's kind of speculative, it's right? It's speculative. I just think it's kind because of Because he was thing. also the leader of the disciples, and he kind of took care and of that And therefore, he took role. care of all the leadership role. So, and that would have been a, something like that. But... Um, and we also see that that Christ only sent two disciples to go procure the donkey furs right into Jerusalem. He didn't send them all. So what is that? You know what I mean? So right. there's different tasks for different things. So it's all speculative. But. Right. So 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 far we see though is that the early church, those followers of the way, viewed themselves as disciples of of Jesus, and then the disciples obviously we gave them the name the disciples because they were followers of. Jesus. And so if we continue on, we ask the question that is, okay, so what does Jesus call his disciples to do? And we're not talking about us. We're talking about his the disciples, the apostles. What does he actually tell the apostles to do? We see three different grades. Do you like this? Here we go. So we got the great commission, the great commandments, and then the great promise. All right, let's you go, like bro. That? I want a little Baptist pastor on you. So Jesus calls his disciples to do three different things. One is the great commission. And we read that last week. I have been given all third of heaven on earth. Go, th- th- I'm going to say go therefore, because that's what we know. King um, Jimmy. King Jimmy, go therefore to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So Jesus tells his disciples to continue teaching other people in the same way that I taught you. And then baptize them. And then I'm going to be with you in the process. Right. And then there's also the greatest commandment. Teacher, reading from Matthew 22, 36 or 40, says, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, Jesus, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. For all the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Question. Yes. Wasn't he saying this in response to... A question that was asked of him, yes. But not by his disciple. No, but his this disciples were he was teaching. So you, so you are right. You caught me in that one. Well, so, I, I'm just, I just want to make sure we're contextually correct. Yeah, yeah. So he, so it wasn't one of the disciples that asked him this question, I don't think. It was someone from the crowd or... I believe it was a Pharisee or a Sadducee that asked well, him. Well, let's pull it up They're because tra- they were I don't trying want to, to say it wrong. Were, they were trying to trap him, I believe. It, this was a trap that was laid... Um, before him, and that's why he quoted the law, right? This is the law, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. That that he was. That's why he used these. Yes. Okay. So when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, which they're like, yeah, you get them. That'd be almost like, okay, so when we found out, that, well, this is not true, but it's almost like, oh, so when the Republicans found out that the Demis got shut up or when the, De- the Democrats found out that the Republicans got shut up, well, we're going to go get them now too. So you got to remember what the Sadducees were, right? They were yep. the law keepers, right? They were the judge, jury, executioner of the law. That's who the Sadducees uh, were. That's Sanhedrin. Because you had the Pharisees, which are the conservatives. The the the, the Sadducees did not believe in right. the, the resurrection. They you're didn't right. believe in the miraculous. You're right. No, you're right. They were more literal. Pharisees try to hold to the tr- conservative traditions, and then sure. the scribes. Those were your theologians, right, and right. whatnot. So, um, when the Pharisees heard that that he silenced the Sadducees, they came together, and one of them, an expert of the law, asked a question to test Jesus. You're right, teacher. Which of these commandments of the law is the greatest? And then that's when he said, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself." And so, but we see so far, if Jesus calls his disciples to do this, to go and teach in his name, to love God with all your heart, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Sure. 
right? And so that's what Jesus has been calling and teaching people to do. And then, you know, there's a great promise and another thing that goes kind of into the idea of what Jesus calls his disciples to actually do. And this is in John 15, and I'm just going to read the whole chapter. Go for it, bro. Because I'm like, oh, I can break this up, but I want to break it up. Listen, so, nobody ever apologizes for reading scripture around here. Let's go. Nope, here we go. So all of John 15, here we go. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it can produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. Just as the branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, they throw them in the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, Ask whatever you want, and it'll be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you produce much fruit and, ready, prove to be my disciples. So what does it mean to be proved to be Jesus' disciples? That you remain in Jesus. And what's the promise? That he will remain with you as well. And you got to produce fruit. Yep, and you got to keep producing fruit. So let's continue on. It says, as the Father has loved me, so I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and so that your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one, is great, no one has greater love than this than to lay one's life down for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything. And I have heard from my father. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain. So whatever you ask and ask the father in my name, he will give to you. This is what I command you. Love one another. If the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. And if you were in the, uh, and <laughs> if you were of the world, the world would also love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Remember the word I have spoken to you. A servant is no greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they'll also keep yours. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name because they don't know the one who sent me. If I had not came and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I have not done the works among them that no one else has done, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, they have seen and hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the statement written in their law might be fulfilled. They hated me for no reason. When the counselor comes, and this is the promise, when the counselor comes, the one I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. You will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And that's the promise that he gives is the comforter will come. So when we look at Jesus' commands, again, we won't look at just Jesus, not the Apostle Paul, not Peter, because if Jesus, if we're called to be Jesus' disciples, we want to see what Jesus told his disciples to do. And what has Jesus commanded so far that we've seen is to go and tell people about me. Another one is to love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then remain in me and I remain in you right. produce much good fruit in me. And then that will prove that you are in me. Love one another, remain in my love. Um, and even talk about the world hates you. It's going to hate me. When the Holy spirit comes, he will testify about me. So when you see of, about all these different things, if we just stopped right here, all right, if we just stopped right here, we didn't have the apostle Paul's writings. We didn't have Peter's. We didn't have John's. We didn't have Jude. We didn't have revelation. What would it mean for us to be a disciple of Jesus? Uh, to emulate Christ, I would say, mm -hmm. and it, the way he did things. And the reason why I say that, and, and <clears throat> there's a, there's people out there sometimes that say, well, he spoke just to his disciples, right? And, and they would be correct, right? This is a, These are commands. I mean, we even, look at, we even look at the Sermon on the, the Mount. The, it says he t taught his disciples. Right. The Great Commission is uh, he's speaking directly to, to the disciples, but what's he tell them there? What right? What's he saying uh, at the uh, end of verse sixteen? There, uh, he says, uh, 
go then to all the people and make, make them, them my disciples. And make them disciples. And so they're his disciples. They're emulating Christ, right? Mm-hmm. They're learning to be just like Christ. And then they're supposed to get disciples. And what are those disciples supposed to do? Make disciples. They're su- Well, they're supposed to emulate their teacher, their master, who's mm-hmm. emulating their teacher and their master. So this is where it says, okay, so they're going to teach everything, and they're going to give them the same command. Go into all the world, right? Because they're emulating their master, and that's exactly what their master Christ said. Mm-hmm. So this is how it comes down. When It's one of the biggest pet peeves I have is when people go, the Great Commission was just for the disciples. The, the Which Ma- is so Matthew 20, odd to me. 16, 16 through 20 is just for the disciples. We were never commanded. That was spoken directly to the disciples. It's like, yes, but we're but, disciples of the disciples of the disciples of the disciples who all emulate Christ. So that's why it's a command to us just as much as it was a command to them. So anyways, that's a rant that I can save for another day. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, it's, but it's not a bad one because when we look at all of these different passages of Scripture, again, we're looking at just what Jesus is. Jesus says in John 15, in order to be a disciple of Jesus, we need, to, we need to do what? We need to obey his commands. We need to remain connected to Jesus. Right. We need to love one another. Right. And forget, and talk about forgiving one another in like, you know, What's greater love than this? Lay one's down life for his friends. And Jesus right. even says, you're not just my servants anymore. You're my friends because you know what's going on. A servant doesn't know what the heck is going on in the master's head, you, but, but but we know what's going on. So the funny thing is, it, you know, you, you bring up one of those things of obey my commands, right? We talked mm-hmm. about that. That was the very first thing you mentioned. And so many people go, well, that means we got to obey the law, right? We had that uh, a, a listener years back. Remember when we were going back and forth in the emails and the messages about um, fulfilling, the, you know, we got to do the law. And we were like, well, Christ came and fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with the law. And we go through all these things. He completed it. Um, it's been done. It, it goes back to when Christ, and that he, that he pointed to this at one point, the John 15 of obey my command. And it's like, okay, obey your commands, right? Because those who love him obey his commands. And then we go back to exactly what you already said when he was teaching the, the, the uh, Sadducees of Matthew 22, right? Of, all right, what's the commands? Well, here's the two greatest commandments. I mean, he's going to spell it out and make it easy for everybody. Instead of doing 601 or 680 or 1,001, here's, here's two. And this encompasses, it covers everything. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Boom, done. And so when we look at it, if this is what Jesus called his disciples to do, and then they called, and they made disciples, and they went out and told people about Jesus and said, follow Jesus' command, and these are what Jesus' commands are, then the question becomes is, what are we supposed to do with that? Mm. Do we, and here's another question, do we get to call ourselves Christians by our own definition, or is it one of those things where it's supposed to be, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a disciple of Jesus, I'm a, I'm a follower of, of Jesus, and people must be like, oh, you must be one of those Christians, huh? And so I think this is where the conversation comes of what does it mean to be a fan of Jesus versus a follower of Jesus? Right. Um, and there's a lot of questions I have. I'm trying to think of the best question to ask coming out of this. But I think the question is the fact, one question we can start with in all this conversation is, can you be like, can you like Jesus and be a fan of Jesus and call yourself a Christian, but not fully follow the commands of Christ? Sure. So, you know, and, and, and then even like, how does that look in today's world? So it's, it, 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 it is very true, right? Cause people go, oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. You know, I go to church and we, we see the, uh, where was it at? Was it Christ? Was it Paul? I can't remember who it was. Somebody in the new Testament, right? <laughs> between, between Matthew between and Matthew Revelation. And Revelation. <laughs> uh, said, yeah, even, even the demons believe and le- flee in fear, you know, and tr- or tremble in fear. Uh, just because you believe, just because you go through the motions, uh, does not necessarily make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian? It's those same things we talked about last week on the podcast. Mm-hmm. We're talking on believers, right? Uh, of of the 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 Romans road. You know, it's recognizing, it's um, it's admitting, it's surrendering, uh, and it's confessing, right? And, and those things that you have to do. And it's not just confessing of okay, well, you know, because we don't earn our salvation, right? that's not what it is. The justification process has already been done. Now we just accept the justification mm-hmm. and then enter into the sanctification process, which I know Christianese words, uh, we go from, uh, which we have an episode on that, by the way, accepting the free gift of God, right? The free gift, the p- price has already been paid for sin. Mm-hmm. We are called to obey in that sanctification process. Um, sanctification is living out, right? It's, it's that, that, that act of obedience. So, the justification or the, the, the saving faith 
has already been established there. And, and part of receiving that justification is that sanctification of obedience. Mm -hmm. And that's where the two mesh together. But I guess this is where my thought goes then, because I, because I did have this question here because I thought about it. I'm like, that's where we're logically going to go and end up. But the thing is with Jesus, like, you know, in, in the all the time in today's culture, we said, well, you just need to ask Jesus into your heart. Mm. Pray their sinners pray. Because right. I've met so many people sure. both just in church life and as a pastor where it's like people, are like, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, I, I, I prayed for Jesus to forgive my sins back when I was like seven. I got baptized when I was eight. And I'm like, so where's the fruit? Yeah, right. It, it goes and back so, to that. So, so how do we balance this idea of asking, like where, does this, where the heck does this idea of asking Jesus into our heart is sure. versus what does it mean to follow? And then does that instantly mean then of our salvation? You know, Paul says in Ephesians, for by grace you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Grace is a gift. But Jesus doesn't call us to just sit and they receive the gift. Jesus says, follow me. Right. Salvation is found in following me. So at what point does works counterbalance faith well and and all it goes, all, all these different things and how does faith james. work it goes back to james right okay show, show, show me your faith without with james works. brother of jesus show me your faith with without works and i'll show you my faith by my works right it's not a i'll show you i'll be doing the works to show you my faith right it's all about works because it's not work salvation it's not what it is is it's saying i'll show you my faith is real and you can see it because of the actions that I ta- that I have in my life. You can see it based upon the, my personality, how I talk, how I walk, how I treat others. Mm-hmm. This is how you can know that my faith is real. And I can tell you your faith is not real because you don't act this way. You act no different than the world. And so, so let's lean into that. So what would be a characteristic of someone who... I, I don't want to just use the term fan or follower. I want to use the term, what would be the difference between someone who's a Christian in name versus a disciple of Jesus? What differentiates those two different people? Because as we have this mm. conversation, someone might be listening and hearing that whole thought of the fact of, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, whatever tradition you come out of, like, yes, I go to church. I, sure. I, I do the right things. I try to live, like, I try to live for God. You know, I try to honor and respect him, but how do I know, how do I actually know that I'm a disciple of Jesus? Well, and does it matter about, cause you know, people talk about, you know, I, I pray forgive my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Is sure. that enough? Um, you know, like there's, there's, there's a whole bag of weeds you, you, to unpack, yeah. man. So, so and I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to let you just talk. The best <laughs> way, right. To, to judge fruit in yourself. Mm-hmm. One, be honest with yourself, right. Self-examination, right. You're going to know if you know, or, mm-hmm. or you're just going to not think about it. And that to me tells me, okay, you might have some problems. But another thing is, we have something called the what? Fruit of the Spirit, spirit. right? So what's the fruit of the Spirit? Name them off for me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Right. So those are the fruit that come out of a changed heart, of a of a transformation, a regeneration of the mind, right? Uh, which is what? Romans 8, uh, 6. Was it Romans 8, 6? I can't remember. Uh, but that renewing of your mind. So when you truly follow Christ and want to learn his ways, uh, how, what's the best way, Mark, you can learn what Christ wants you to do? Um, I need to read what Jesus said and then what it's his followers okay. say too. So uh, we, we, we had a, a person um, say we act like we have a direct line with God, right? We have a thus saith the Lord kind of persona. I mean, we have a it. thus saith the Bible. But that's that's the, what I was saying, right? Yeah, you're, you're right. We do have a direct line with God, and it's the called Holy, the Bible. But the Holy Spirit also says that we and the can, Holy Spirit we can that enter leads before us. the throne room right. boldly. Right. That, so we, ha- we have two things, right? We don't say we have a, a thus saith the Lord that's outside of the Bible. We're saying thus saith the Lord via the Bible and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? That's what we say. The Holy Spirit has has taught us through various aspects, whether it be mentors, pastors, podcasts. The Holy Spirit has brought to us certain things that has taught us through Scripture, mm-hmm. through doctrinal teaching, not the tradition. I'm not saying tradition. It's I'm sola scriptura, but there is doctrine that is based upon sola scriptura. And uh, uh, that is uh, itself by a scripture a, alone. That, that, that is that. in itself a doctrine, right? <laughs> um that we have the been, Bible contains everything we need for we faith ha- and practice, yeah. right? So, but we have been taught by mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit through these various forms because the Holy Spirit has used these various forms mm-hmm. to teach us, right? And that's what we say. Okay, yeah, we do have a direct line with God. It's called the Bible, and it's called 
doctrines of the church. So if someone does believe all these different things, I mean, what what stops and prevents someone from worrying about their faith? Because, you know, like, you know, I, I've talked with a handful of Catholics and they say, you'll never hear us say we have a surety of our salvation. We hope. But then you have other people where it's like, oh, I know I'm going to heaven. And I'm like, bro, you see what you're doing. Right. Like, right. you know, it's like there's good people. Not good, I don't say good people. There's people who I believe are followers of Jesus and they have a bit of a worry. Then some people who are like, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because I prayed the sinner's prayer. So God has to redeem me. And I'm sure. like, um, what? But it all comes back to fruit root, right? If you're not tied into the root, the vine, AKA John 15, right? You yep. ain't going to produce the fruit. Mm-hmm. You're just not. You are not going to, you may be able to fake the fruit for a while, mm. but there's a difference between fake fruit I and real fruit. I feel that though, because for me, like with my personality, I tend to have more of a performance personality. Mm, and like right. I felt that as a youth pastor, leading on empty, you know, right. where it's like, I'm supposed to teach, I'm supposed to preach. And I, I, I taught ECA chapel the other day. I felt rusty, but I'm also like, am I, am I really the one to be teaching right now? Because mm. like I, you know, life has been hard. Have I really been that connected to Jesus lately? Which then some people be like, well, I haven't been connected with Jesus like I used to be. Just so that mean I just like, I, I'm not saved anymore. Does that mean I'm not part of the elect? Does that mean I'm not a follower of Jesus or I'm not a disciple anymore? Like the, the thoughts can get really hairy and scary. I think the, that, um, there's seasons, right? There's ups and there's, there's highs and there's low. There's spiritual highs and spiritual lows where you're like, I like, I like, oh. I like Mrs. Dash for my seasoning. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, I like the Jamaican blend, but whatever. <laughs> um, Sorry. So silly. Uh, we have a lot of caffeine in us, guys. The, the highs of the Christian, like, man, nothing can separate me from the love of God to the to the lows of, God, please help me take this thorn from my side. Like, I need you. Uh, and I think that's why Paul encourages us to continue to run the race well. Mm. This is a marathon. If you fall, you got to get up, keep running. And you're going to have time where you're like, this sucks. Let's just keep going. You know what the assurance is of salvation? The fact that you keep going. Mm. The fact that you continue to push through when you don't feel like it. The fact that, you know, you continue to search for the heart of God. You're, you're continually uh, self-examining. Uh, you're doing these things even when you don't feel like it. I, don't, I haven't read my Bible. Man, just the thought that, man, I haven't read my Bible and I feel bad about that is probably a pretty good indicator rather than, Never thinking about not reading your Bible right, or, or never I, thinking about not praying. Yeah. And I see people in the Facebook group, they're like, oh, you know, I'm trying to get back. I need to get back into church. I'm trying to find a small group. But like, that's good. Yeah. Th- that shows something, right? That's good. And so that's where I would say the conviction of the Holy Spirit, mm. right? So that's part, you, you show fruit, but then there's the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Which is the, which is the sin, sign of the new covenant is right. the circumcision of the heart sure. and the seal of the Holy Spirit. So it goes back to does sin bother you? Mm. Because you can sear your mind, right? You can you can get so caught up, wrapped up in sin that sin don't bother you no more. And then now I would worry. Now I would be definitely questioning. But if sin is bothering you, if the the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you feel tore, you feel upset, you feel disappointed by that sin that you committed. I would say there's a pretty good indication. You may not be healthily tied into the vine, but you're still tied into the vine, and and continue to pursue that. Right. That's what we're called to do. We're co- to continue to pursue Christ in all things. And be useful, because we see, like, in the vine, it talks about usefulness. You use your fruit to be useful. You see in salt, salt was useful well, back then. How, you see the, like, are, like, are you either, are you lukewarm as outside? Like, oh, you know, like God, God either wants you to love him or hate him. No, it's the fact of, are you useful? Right, right, yeah. And I have another verse I want to read, too. Go for it. Out of, this is, we're, we're going to go to Peter again. So, back in Second Peter 1, which I, I want to make sure I get, I say what, what? First Peter 4 is where he talks about being a Christian, but Second Peter 1, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith equal to ours, which I think is interesting that Simon Peter, we have a faith equal to Peter. Sure. Not like a elevator, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, you mean he's not upon a pedestal? Nope. Sorry. So- um, to those who have received a faith equal to ours through, through the righteousness <laughs> of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of an evil desire. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to become divine beings or gods. Right. The divine nature, in my opinion, is more the fact of eternal life. Um, for this very reason, okay, so for this very reason, because of the promise that we, we have, 
because of the promise for this very reason, make every effort and uh, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brother or brotherly affection or sisterly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from, you ready, from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election sure, because if you do these things, you won't stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly provided to you. So, Pinprick pause, kind of divert off. So okay. that scripture right there at the very end uh, is what a lot of people say. Well, that's how you know you can lose your salvation, right? Or you got to make your calling an election sure. Right, but where does it start? And, where does your calling an election but sure that's start? Not, that's not what it's talking about, though. So what it's talking about. It's not talking about make your calling an election sure. What he's saying in that context, at least from what I just heard and, and what I'm understanding, is that he's saying live in such a way that – you don't have to worry about whether you're going to heaven or not because you are assured because you see the fruit. Because you see, again, you it's, it's not you're, talking you're, about you can lose your salvation. It's talking about you don't have to even think about it because you are in the vine. You have you have run the race right, well. Right, because your salvation is not tied to your sinner's prayer. Right. It's more the fact of, is it tied to the fact that you're a, you're a disciple of Jesus? Right. Peter knows, right? Because Peter denied Christ th- three times. Peter knows but better than anybody. You can have some lows in your walk. You can have lows in your walk and still be tied into the vine. Mm, thou preach. So uh, just because you have lows doesn't mean you're useless, right? You can still find ways to be useful, yep. i.e., hey, you may feel useless right now, but you're still being a witness to your kids. Mm-hmm. And and we're all called to do different parts because we're all parts sure. of the body. But I do want to start with the fact of the apostle Peter here did not start with, and so actually your works that he says, what does he say? He says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. So it says it just starts with faith. You right. supplement your faith, and as where you add to it with goodness. So, so think of the building blocks. You start with faith, and then you add goodness to it. After goodness, you add knowledge, actually learning and understanding. And that knowledge, what, leads you to self-control. That self-control with endurance um, and endurance with godliness. All right? So knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance to continue the running the race well. And then with that endurance, with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, just loving the community. And then with brotherly affection, actual love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, if you keep constantly growing in your faith and growing your faith results in an external change and an outward actions and motions, what does it say? They will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says, the person who lacks it, you're blind. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every make your election and your calling sure. Right. Well, and, and it's not just us, right? The Holy Spirit allows us and affords us the opportunities to learn and grow. It takes God to love God. Let's just be honest, right? Right. In order for us to change... We have to be the willing participant, but it's usually God that does the increase, right? Right, because when you look at it from a forward perspective, we're following look after Jesus. But when we look back and we're like, "Dang, yo, I this is why I just showed up." Well, this is what <laughs> this is why Peter says in First Peter that, "Hey, uh, you're going to be purified as fine gold through fire." Like that's part of the, the purification process. The purification, that's James right, too. James right, one and two, exactly. Yeah. So, um, it, it, it all of this happens. And everything happens to the good and glory of God for those who love him, right? Mm -hmm. So so you think about that scripture. And what does that mean? That means that everything that happens to us, highs, lows, um, struggles, it's all for the goodness and glory of God. Why? Because it's working on us. It's Mm -hmm. God working on our hearts and working on our fruit where it's going to make us. It's like a. we're in the vine. We're attached trees. So we're producing we are, fruit. Well, he is the vine and, and we are the branches. And sometimes, and, me is love. Yeah. and sometimes the tree's got to be pruned to produce. It says it, it says it right there. To produce more fruit. More fruit. Exactly. I mean, you do that with a, like my, when I had rose bushes, I had to 
actually prune the rose bushes right. for it to, and I had to prune at a certain spot. Otherwise it'll die. Yeah. And it, you need to grow more fruit. Like I pruned my my mint bushes right. just recently because that way it can produce better because it was long, it was straggly, I, it was a pain in the butt, it was annoying. I, so I, I pruned I, my I, cilantro. You do the cilantro the same way. You gotta cut the cilantro down. Rhubarb, you gotta do all these you have to prune these things in order for them to do to produce. And it hurts. It, you know? Yeah, it's not a fun experience for the plant, <laughs> but it's a helpful and useful thing for the plant. Yep. All right. So, so, so let's All get right. back yep. into now the question then becomes, okay, so we've talked about what it means to be a disciple. Being a disciple is not just, you know, saying a prayer, asking Jesus into your heart and then constantly asking Jesus in your heart and then getting baptized, which we then, talked about last week, Yep. but it's all about actually following Jesus, having the faith that Jesus is who he said he was, believing that he's the son of God, that he's the cosmic king of the universe, and then following after him and what it means for us to now live in such a way where people look at us and go, man, you must be a Christian, man. To take up your cross, right? Take, take your and, cross daily and follow me. Because Jesus, because even Bonhoeffer says, you know, when Jesus bids you to come, he bids you to come and die. Like right. that's in his that's in his right. costly grace book. But how will the world know how will the world know who we are? By our love for one another. By our love for one another. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. I love it. So, so then the question then becomes is, okay, so after all of this conversation we just had, how can we become one of Jesus' disciples? And is that different from just being a Christian? So I have a quote because I don't want to get too far off banter and whatnot. Sure, so sure. I have a quote from God, our, our good old friends at gotquestions.org. It says this, the Bible teaches that the good work, oh, the Bible teaches that the good works we do cannot make us acceptable to God. Titus 3, 5 says he saved us not because of the righteous things that we have done, but because of his mercy. He Amen. has saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And that, wait, pause right there, right? Pause. The renewal by the Holy Spirit. This again shows, and t- Titus is showing <laughs> that it's not just us. It's not, we can't produce the g- good works on our own. Yeah, and Paul talks about the old man and the new man. Right, exactly. It's the renewal by the Holy Spirit. Yep. And so, so a Christian is someone who has been born again by God. John 3 3, John 3 7, which is Jesus. Right. And then 1 Peter 1 23. And has put, uh, put faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 8 says, by grace you have been through faith, and that is not a gift, but it is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, and it's you know so that no one can boast. Right. But if you continue in verse ten, this is me doing a side note. It also says you have been saved for good works. Like it right. ain't just done. It ain't done. Man, you know what? I got, I got my I got my ticket on the J train. I got a purpose we gonna for heaven. you. I'm going heaven when I die. I'm just gonna right. chill until Jesus comes back. No, you got crap to do. And then it continues though, and it says a true Christian is a person who has put faith and trust in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, including his death on the cross and payment for sins and his resurrection on the third day. John 1, 12 tells us, yet to all who have received him, to those, um, man, this is King Jimmy. I'm, it's so weird reading to it. To those who believed in yeah, his so, name. So, so yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. We're going to talk about that next week. The mark of a true Christian is to love others Oh, it's love for others and obedience to God's word. A true Christian is indeed a child of God, a part of God's true family, and one has been given new life in Christ. And then to continue on that conversation then is the fact of now so that you have been saved, now go and do. Right. Now and go and do. You know, there's that old quote from Billy Sunday where it's like, just because you walk into a garage doesn't make you a car. In the same way of just walking <laughs> into church doesn't make, make you, you a, a Christian. Christian. Right. And we talk about, I mean, I, I like how the, the Presbyterians and the Protestant Reformation talks about the visible church and the invisible church of you can be a part of the physical church church, the physical people, the physical gathering, but that doesn't mean you're part of the actual bride of Christ, right? you know? And so I do think it's a, a fair, safe question to ask, am I just going through the motions? Do I actually believe who Jesus is? And am I living for him? And if you're like, you know what, M- my actions during the week don't quite line up with, with what's going on everywhere. Well, and they can go, well, well, Mark, then, I mean, you know, you're, you're saying that, so is that why? What is it? Who was it? Peter or John? I can't remember. Says they they have left us because they were not they were not of they us. were not of us, right? And so that's where you could see even in the early church, the same problem existed, right? They wanted to be a part of it. Jesus Himself saw it, right? Mm-hmm. When He turned to the the twelve disciples and say, "Well, are you guys going to leave me now too?" And they said, "Where will we go?" Right? Like, like you like have who the, else? You, you have, you the, have key the, the keys, the key to their eternal life. So I, I mean, we see it even in the time of Christ. There are those who follow because it's a fad, or they're a fan, mm-hmm. and there's those who follow because they are followers. You know, there's a quote, and I'm trying to pull it up. It's not quite loaded, so I have to read it on, like, size 2 font, um, from Stephen Charmick. He's, he's an old, like, Puritan reformer. Sure. Uh, he says, it's a sad thing to be a Christian at a supper, 
heathens in our shops and the devils in our closets. Ooh. And what he's trying to say is it's it's a shame when we're eating, eating dinner and we pray to Jesus, but then when we're out in the workplace, we're terrible people, we're scums, and then in the closet, in other words, in the dark places of our lives, it looks nothing like Jesus. So right. that's that would be my challenge to people who are listening to this, asking the question of, okay, so am I just a disciple of Jesus? Am I just Christian by name? Am I a fan of Jesus? Am I a follower of Jesus? I think the difference is a fan of Jesus says in their mind, yeah, Jesus is awesome, but their life doesn't match it. Right. But a disciple of Jesus says, yes, I'm following after Jesus. It's hard. It's not easy. I don't do things right. And the renewal you know, process you know, by the Holy Spirit all shows things, Like the Apostle Paul, you know, there's things that I wish I did, that, but I don't do. And right. the things that I should, uh, things that I don't do, I, I tend to do. Right. And it's not the fact of the, you know, the, the simple reality of, oh, you just keep, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I, I don't really feel bad. I'm sorry. There's no growth and change. I think right. there needs to be a level of that. But a true disciple of Jesus is following after a teacher, after the rabbi, after the teacher. Because Jesus even says, let none of you guys be known as teacher, for you're not the teacher. You have one teacher. That teacher's me. Right. Let no one call you rabbi. Right. You're not a teacher. You're a disciple of me. And keep making disciples of me. Right. So I think that's something that we just need to lean into is if you are a follower of Jesus, like what he says, you're not just going to be, you know, you you don't just pray to God, thank Jesus for your food, but your entire life will be marked by it. Mm -hmm. I, I like that, man. Good. Well, I have one more quote that I want go to end f- the day with. Go for From it, From good old St. Augustine of Hippo. After I read this, we'll do some fun facts. How about Sounds that? Sounds great. Uh, St. Augustine of Hippo says this, Christ is not valued at all unless he is valued above all. Mm, I like that. Christ is not valued at all unless he is valued above all. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> There it is. That yeah. laugh, that giggle. You got to like how you open your episodes with, with quotes, and I, I like to tend to end mine with quotes. That's all right. I ended mine with a quote last week, too. Yeah, yeah You book, I, you I book ended end. yours, homie. I need to re-record the laugh thing, the fun facts with Fuller, and add Shiloh <gasps> into it here soon. We don't have Shiloh when, in the laugh. When he gets better at speaking, we'll get him in there. <laughs> you can just record him laughing, I guess. But that that laugh from... Is that Noel's laugh or that Piper's laugh? That was Piper. That was Piper? Then, yeah. Because yeah, Noel's got probably... Up. I think Noel was two and she they was were young, three or man. something like that. Yeah, it was yeah, probably it was like ago. season one was the when we started doing that or maybe beginning uh, yeah. of season two, something it, like that. It would have been season one, I, I think. So about three years ago. Yeah, something like that. That's wild. But dude, we have not missed a fun fact on this show yet. And we got shirt lines. And we got shirt lines. That's really dope. But Coming my dude, out. what's the fun fact you got to end the show today? The fun fact of the day. Did you know that sunglasses were originally designed for Chinese judges to hide their facial expressions in court? I think you've done this one. No. Did Are you I? sure? Did I? You keep going. I'm going to look. I feel like we've done right. this one. Today, sunglasses serve as a protective eyewear, uh, effectively preventing bright sunlight from causing discomfort or damage to our eyes. Of course, they're also fashionable accessories, but sunglasses were originally made out of a smoky quartz in the 12th century China, uh, where they were used by judges to mask their emotions when they were questioning witnesses. Did I use it? Did I do it before? Episode 152. Dang it. All right. Ah, wait, no, 158. Quick. quick. 158. Did What's I the re- difference between denominations part two? Dang it. Like, literally. Like, I just searched for it and never know, bro. Dude. All right. Read the fun fact on the back of my shirt, then. Read the fun fact on the back of your shirt? Go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the ending. Okay. Um, Mountain Dew used to be slang for moonshine? Yes, sir. Really? See, this is how this so, back plan here. So, when I hear Pastor Scott saying, man, I, I, I drink a lot of Mountain Dew. Dew. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. there's Diet Moonshine? Okay. Um, Mountain Dew may be a popular soft drink, but the name used to be slang for moonshine. To back up this claim, uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian points to the Stanley Brothers tune, Mountain Dew, which is all Appalachian folk song that most certainly isn't talking about the soda. Instead, the lyrics refer to good old Mountain Dew or illegal Mountain Brewed Moonshine. Whoa. Fun fact with Mark High. Wow, my mic just fell. We'll go back to this. Look at you that. know, whenever you I like see that? old mountain, I always think of, oh, Rocky Top. See, I always think of, play me some good old bad music. Which, let's just be honest, man, Tennessee, Knockdown, Bama, good old Rocky Top. And Notre Dame got hosed by uh, Stanford. And that was kind of, a, we both went to that game. We spent good money to see terrible a football. terrible performance. Terrible. I mean, I got to give up for Stanford to do okay, I guess. But, man, Tommy Reese, we need to put some points on the board, bro. Come on, Tommy. Now, by by this point, I mean, Notre Dame is probably already out of, out of the 
any any bowl contention oh, yeah, by this point yeah, of, of the, definitely of, of the season. Definitely. <laughs> oh, I'm goodness. just hoping for a, a, a six and six season. I'm just hoping Marcus Freeman doesn't get fired. That's what my goal is this season. No, is. I think they'll give him a couple seasons. Before yeah, I that. like how we talk about this. Like we have any stakeholders in, the, in yeah. Notre Dame football at all. Marcus Freeman doesn't even know who we are. But let's be honest, you aren't here to uh, hear us talk about football. You're here here to literally make us shut up because we're done with the episode. So yeah. we'll just end it. Just like always, hit us up over on the Instagram, Facebook. Join the RTC online community on Facebook where we continue conversations. We have questions that are asked every single day by me, by Fuller, by listeners just like you. If you want to continue and engage in the conversation and find other Christians just like you that are going through similar life circumstances, go ahead and hit up the Facebook group. And go ahead and check us out on YouTube, uh, Real Talk Christian Podcast, and uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Ding! And you'll know when we're on. Uh, you know, I've been terrible about terrible. everything. You've been lately. Charles Barkley, terrible. I'm terrible, ter- Brad, terrible. We've both been terrible. Like, I, family's I really been busy, have, life's been challenging. I, I have so many more things that I want to do on YouTube, uh, and people have been subscribing, and I want to be faithful to them. So. I got to try hard. It's I hard. Try hard. It, it's hard. But if you have a question that you would love to hear for us to answer on the show, yeah. so far the last two episodes have been questions from you guys. We've had questions such as, how do you explain the dinosaurs? Oh, yeah. We've had I know. that we question. That'd that be a whole lot of fun. We've had questions about um, the different theories of creation, like day like day age theory or right, right. little new, creation, new, this, that, and the new, other. Early, or what is it? A young Earth or old Earth? Earth, old Earth, all right. those kind of different yeah. fun things. So if you have a question for the show, you can ask us inside of the Facebook group, Instagram, DMs, texting, or email, any way you can get a hold of us. But guys, we loved you. We are thankful you've tuned into the show. <sighs> Until next time, take it easy.